We've had congressmen run up on our people and talk to them crazy. We've had people jump out with machine guns and, and AKs and machetes. All right, this, this one video that you just sent me recently, uh, that was them coming to your house. What happened with the situation? You said that was FEMA? Yeah, so I was uh, getting ready to get in the shower and I saw the cameras go off and I looked out, I was like, who is this? And they were knocking on the door. I heard them knocking and all that. I couldn't get out there in time to talk to them. So of course I jumped in the truck and rode around the corner and I was looking around for them. I figured they were still around if they were knocking on people's doors. So I found them and I started talking to them. And as soon as they saw I was recording, they didn't like that. So I stopped and then immediately started recording again, of course. So okay. they were they were actually very nice. They were actually trying to help. But then as soon as the badges and the other guy got involved, it got a little weird. But uh So this is whenever you the video you you came and then you looked for them, you chased them down and then after that when you found them, that's when you start talking about the badges and you said, "Do you have a you talked to those ladies about that FEMA area. And you so you guys are with FEMA, right? Yes, there's my badge to prove who I am. <laughs> so, oh, somebody's calling you, oh, huh? Oh, no, I'm You're filming. Not... This is perfect. Can well, I see we, your badges? We, we can't. But, no, we, but you can't, can't put it in there, though. Oh, okay, not yeah. your badge. No. I got you. So what you ladies have is a real FEMA badge. Yes. You got it. They paid uh, me to do this. Okay, so do you have a site in Candler? That I don't know. I would be lying. Where's Candler? Candler is just west of Asheville. Okay. okay. Every team has a different Question county. For you, sir. We're not supposed to be filmed. That's against our rules. Well, so if to, you're filming, I'm filming in North Carolina, which is a one-party state, but I've actually let you know that I'm filming, and you haven't asked me to stop. You've only said that you're well, not you allowed need, to be. You well, need to ask please, us. Please stop. Please stop, yes. Okay. Please. Well, I will stop. To yeah, I, I, they were they were turning down a side road right down down the street. So I pulled down there, and they had just pulled into somebody's driveway. So I pulled in behind them and kind of, not intentionally, but it worked out. I blocked them in, so they would talk to me for a second. I won't mean to them or anything like that, of course. Yeah. But they were they were very nice, and they were like, "Yes, we're from FEMA. We're just trying to help people." Blah blah blah. And I was like, "Okay, so if you're real FEMA, what's going on in Candler at this other site?" They didn't know. They didn't want to talk. They said, "Don't film us. Let's call our supervisor." And then. He shows up about 10 or 15 minutes after we started talking. And when he comes in, he comes by us way, way, way too fast to be on that street. Slams on brakes, throws it in reverse, squeals tires and backs up. And then later on in the video, you hear him say, oh, well, that was either meant to hit you or let you know I was coming to get these ladies out by any means necessary. So um, um, didn't hit it. had to hit it quite that hard. How you doing, man? Pretty good. How you doing? Nice to meet you. All right, Dante. Nice to meet you. So, you are at the Blue Ridge Community College facility, correct? Correct. Okay. So, what is going on in Candler? Can't tell you. Can't tell me, or you don't know? Can't tell you. Because they're saying they're FEMA, and they're not. Okay. Have you called your local law enforcement? No, we called Washington, D.C. And FEMA said, no, we don't have a site there. Because we'll never tell you where we are. Oh, okay. Protocol. Correct. Okay. What is, if people are here to help, why wouldn't... For our safety. Because you got a lot of people out here that aren't. Right, but I went into Candler and asked them for help and told them I had trees on my house and I needed to sign up for disaster relief. And I was met with resistance and forced out with armed security. Here is when he infiltrated that FEMA count and got forced out. We've already had another reporter. She came in here, tried to villainize us, tried to say that, you know, we're doing all sorts of just crazy shit that we're, that's not happening. So the misinformation that's being spread and the division that's being forced is wrong. Because all you're doing is creating further turmoil and you're upholding the response times. Let me guys have, have you guys come out here. Let me guys have you guys come out here. And we'll right. get you to the front you need deck. Need I'm just trying to find out where you guys have been. I mean, we, we've still been pulling people out of the woods that say they haven't seen anybody. Why would that happen? Because we have equipment there. Okay. For safety, everything. Equipment, people, personnel, documents, your personal information, a lot of things. 
So the local law enforcement is always going to be your first choice to go to. Even if we had an actual building facility, you'll never know. We'll never tell you that we're there just for that reason. Mm -hmm. uh, you get people that are upset, militia, whoever, whatever. We've had them with, coming out of our armed military the whole night. So a lot of times we won't tell you where we are. We won't tell you if we're there. We do have a presence in that area in Chandler, but we can't tell you if it's housing or not. And more than likely, if you ran up on a place and it has armed guards, then there's personnel inside. So, right. Okay. So, so it's us. We're here. We're going to be here for a long time, but they won't tell you exactly where we are. I just found it very strange to go into a FEMA spot and say, please help me and get escorted out with yeah, guns. Everything is a credible threat until we either find otherwise. And so their protocol is to us you out in that area. So it's not that we don't want to help you. And I apologize you had that, that engagement with that. But nobody had on FEMA. They won't. A lot of us won't carry. A lot of people are scared to carry in the world. I'm not. I'm not worried see, about it. I don't, I don't I, have it on. I'll, I'll tell you, most of the people. Is that it really out, that bad? It is. Yes. It is. It and is. That, and that's why you have me floating around and pulling around and jumping around and checking everything because it is. Well, the way you backed up, I said, now who is this? Yeah. <laughs> the backup was meant to either hit you or to let you know I was coming to get these ladies out by any means. Oh, no. I would. So he's admitting that he was going to run him over and try to murder him. What do you think about that? Oh, so you, okay. You, you hear him talking about, yeah, the next step I had U.S. Marshals coming in, they were on the way, and blah, 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 which I think that was BS because if he had them on the way, where were they? Why didn't they show up? Because he never called them and said, don't come. So he was trying to intimidate you by bluffing. Pretty much. Never hurt these no, ladies. And I, I've been, <laughs> that's why I'm more concerned about right. you guys. Right not knowing what's going on under the name. Well, they can fuck around and find out, and I'll be that, happy to break it off for them. <laughs> that ain't the word. Those ladies are our highest priority. In right, I understand that. Yeah. I get that. But it's weird. It's, it's just a weird It's very time. weird right now. There are, with our, our threat level the way it is and what we've been encountering here, um, we just have to be careful. So it's nothing against you guys. Oh yeah, it's nothing against you guys. We just might run you over and hit you because of our security threat level is so high. We, I really trust y'all now. And so you're not just a dude with a hat, right? right. Just that guy. Oh no. <laughs> after after me next, it would have been I had federal officers on the way here. I had two U.S. marshals on the way here. So. Well, I'd love to talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't coming in nice though. Oh no. I, yeah. I, mean, I know, but I'm I'm just saying if I call them. It's more like your whole neighborhood is going to be shut down, your whole county. I'm going to pull all my staff out of the field that's helping everybody all over the area. And then we're going to regroup and we're going to figure out what the threat looks like. And then we make some. All because out. I had a question. Yes, you never know. You never know what those are. Questions, videos. We've had congressmen run up on our people and talk to them crazy. We've had people jump out with machine guns and, and AKs and machetes and handguns and all types of stuff. So we're jumpy as hell right now. Oh, I get it. I yeah. believe it. Well, Nobody here, to my knowledge, we've been good in wants to hurt you. Yeah, we've been good it's, in Henderson. It's up in the mountains where people want to stay alone, leave us alone. We don't need your help. We've been up there, too. Me, too. So, and then the, bot, the part where he says, like, they want, they want to, you know, they're ready to catch a body, like, basically saying kill people. Like, what, what is he talking about? The federal employees that's working for these camps? A lot of these guys. Who are, are these people? They're impersonating us. And the difference that you can tell is like. Right, because these folks don't have bad. That's the thing. This is multiple times this same facility with other people. We have problems at that facility where people were going in. They had on body cams. They had fake uniforms on the FEMA. And they were going through asking questions and walking through. So the reason why is because the security already had to deal with that and do a security sweep. So they're, they're very alert. Extremely alert. A lot of those guys come out of correctional office, uh, probably correctional jails, right. facilities, and federal facilities. So they're jumpy as hell and they're looking for a reason to find somebody else. They want that fight. Why? Because these guys are pumped up, man. They're juiced up. They want people that are ready to protect us by all means. And local law enforcement can't always be safe to us because they're loyal to you guys, the community that they grew up in and were raised in and live in. So we got to come with federal officers. And our federal officers have very little tolerance for craziness right now. <laughs> Yeah, he was pretty much talking about the, uh, what my understanding was after I went back and listened to it a couple of times, he was trying to say that the people that are working are scared and that's why they want somebody that's hopped up ready to protect them is what he was trying to say. But the way he said it sounded like they're ready to kill people because they want to fight. They want to get that body. They're ready to box somebody up. I was just like, wow, okay.
So if he's telling you that, like, that's not trustworthy, like, oh, we're supposed to, like, think these people are here to protect us. But it's because they're being exposed. Now they're like, oh, my God, like, or is some, nobody's coming to attack them. We're just we're just trying to find out. We're getting down to the scenario. So the fact that they're already in defense mode is telling me that they're posturing in a way that they shouldn't be posturing. And I don't really like that type of language. No, me neither. And the, the funny thing was, when he showed up, the supervisor, he didn't know I had just recorded the ladies saying, no, you can't film our badges. No, you can't put that on camera. And then he said, an excellent way to tell a federal employee is to ask them to take a picture of their badge and see how quick they step back and say no. And then in the, the full version, you hear the ladies go, <clears throat> yeah, like, oh, no. The other part, though, when you, this is the video we just talked about then. That's really shady and sketchy. But the other part, you say you went to a facility where it was a military presence there. I only had the drone footage. I mean, if you still have the footage of you going into the facility and you said there's like some type of military presence, which you don't know what type it is right now. Did you have any more footage on that that you could like bring out? I don't myself. I have I have a video of us walking into the office and it's just a chill dude sitting there just hanging out. He had broke his foot. He was, had his foot propped up. And I was like, no, man, sit back down, sit back down. We just wanted to talk. I was just trying to get a list of people to go help. And he was like, no, nah, we can't really give a list here, but let me give you this number. You can call her. She has a list. And then you can go and try and assist with those people. So he was really trying to help, too. And that's the place that they didn't have armed security, but they had a much larger uh, National Guard presence. There was 113th Sustainment Brigade from the National Guard. And this was an empty prison for first responders, correct? Right. This is so. Let me explain what this is. This is uh, Asheville Buncombe Tech Community College uh, location in Woodfin, west of Asheville, or northwest of Asheville, and that is a firefighter training facility. They got two, four, or five story buildings that you can see are burned up where they're training the firefighters. They got other little trailers and stuff where they train them, and then they set their base camp up there. But then that road is a dead end road. So when I drove up the first time before I put the drone up, I was by myself and I went up the road and got up and I saw the craggy correctional center sign at the end of the road. I didn't know it was a dead end road. So I got up there. I was forced to pull up into the prison and turn around. There was Humvees and national guard people up there at the prison too. So uh -huh. I, I was like, what are they doing up here? And why is this a prison? I need to get out of here either way. So I turned around and hauled ass out of there. And I went and got up with some people and came back and we put the drone up. So we saw all the stuff and I was like, you know what? Let's just go in. They don't have security at the gate. Let's go. So we go in, we walked around, walked straight into the dining hall, walked around and talked to them for a minute. They showed us to the office. And then we were just kind of walking around on our own, just like, just to see what we could see. And we walked up on two national guard people and we were talking to them and they said, Oh, well, uh, are you authorized to be here? Because we started asking some sensitive questions he didn't like. Well, are you authorized to be here? And we were like, no, we ended up here by mistake, but we're, we're good. We're just, we're getting ready to leave. We just saw you guys and wanted to talk to you. And then he was went straight to the office we just came out of as we were trying to get back to the truck. I was like, we need to go. So we got in the truck and left. And then a Honda Civic came out with four dudes in uniform and followed us out for like three and a half miles. Hmm. Uh what like what did you get a sense of though? Like, are they setting up base camps for like some event in the future? Is like the hurricane? That's, that's the hurricane what hurricane was like a like a like a prelude to helping them just like have an excuse to set it up to make. That's it look really what I'm thinking, man. Now they're at an empty prison, and it almost feels like they're either getting ready for some sort of event to happen, or my other thought, which would actually be a good thing, is that they're going to use that to stage illegals once they round him up when trump gets inaugurated if he makes it that far yeah so two-tier scenario one if trump does that and he gets that far two if it's for americans and you know you got the shadow government you know obama leaving the country stuff like that they end up implementing that plan i think it's going to be not just one side to this though i do think it's, it's going to be a lot of stuff all at once. Yeah, a lot of stuff all at once. That's because I've been racking my brain. I've been doing research on who owns the properties this stuff's on, and I can't really come to a good conclusion on what they're doing, but they got here way too late to help for the hurricane. Way too late. Yeah. 
So they, yeah, they, they ain't trying to help. They ain't trying to help because, like you said, they got there too late. So this is what make it really like this mysterious scenario that we got to break through right now. Like, be careful out there too what you're doing, man, because obviously they got eyes on you. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. But uh, it, it's something, something nefarious for sure. Because, like I said, they got here way too late to help. They haven't been out anywhere, those people anyway. But that place at AB Tech, at the prison. They said that was for responders. They had National Guard people staying in those bunkhouses. So, okay, maybe let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Occam's razor, whatever. Okay, the National Guard are here to help. They're staying in the bunkhouse. Okay, well, why is there still tent cities? People still living in tents and campers and stuff. They don't have heat, don't have anything. I mean, they, they need to be staying in those trailers and put the National Guard somewhere else. One thing we talked about off camera was that that facility where the National Guard was at, this prison connected to the camps, they have a plain runway connected to it. What does that mean? That means that they can easily exit, fly out whenever they need to. Two, they have a solar panel field out here next to this facility. Subscribe, stay tuned. We're gonna have a lot more coming. Get this out, look over here on the left. Make sure you watch these videos. I'm telling you, we got more to break down in this story.